Chapter 1 The problem with most creatives is that they do not know what to do with an idea until it leaves them. It's one thing to have an idea, it's another to know what to do with it. Most creatives do not lack ideas, they lack the tools to implement them. When you understand how sacred ideas are, you'll know why you have to pay maximum attention to them and how to bring them to life. Ideas might look coincidental, but they are also magical. Life has hidden treasures in various forms, and it's left for you to bring forth these treasures using the ideas that come to you. When you're docile and inactive with an idea, it leaves you and finds someone else to inhabit. Elizabeth Gilbert has written this book to address the issues that have been disturbing a lot of people. If you wish to know more about how to establish a connection between yourself and your ideas, then this summary of the book is for you. Chapter 2 Every human has treasures buried inside them in one way or another, and life expects you to find those treasures through what's called the big magic. Creative living is when you find a way to discover that thing that makes you feel alive. For Susan, her creative living was attached to skating. She had loved skating since she was small, and when she got to a point in her life where she found it difficult to generate true happiness, she went back to skating for the fun of it, and it brought back enough happiness to make her feel alive again. Fear is a big limiter when you're trying to experience the big magic. Fear kills your zeal and desire to make a conscious effort to be happy. You need to get rid of your fears by facing them head on. If you're afraid of the ocean, get in the ocean instead and alienate that fear. Fear is boring and mundane, especially if it's related to your creative realm. While it is normal to develop fear over impending danger, fear over your creativity sometimes is totally misguided. You must understand the kind of fear you need. The best way to understand your fear is to acknowledge it and create enough space for it to coexist with your creativity. Let your fear form a part of your creative mind so that you'll be able to explore the places you would otherwise not want to. To experience the big magic, you need to define your creative living. Chapter 3 Inspiration can be a great source of magical experience, especially for writers. For Elizabeth Gilbert, her most magical moment came from a book she failed to write. She had listened to a story from a friend named Philippe about how the Brazilian government at one time decided to embark on a big project. The government had decided to build a highway across the Amazon, and enough money was raised for the project. Soon enough, work started, and a considerable percentage of the highway was already constructed when the rain came. Unfortunately, none of the planners had known what rain felt like in the Amazon. Unable to work, the crew packed their equipment and left, only to return months later and find out that the water and earth had swallowed their equipment. Also, the highway constructed had been totally washed away by the water. The way the highway disappeared underground looked magical to Gilbert. She was awed by how nature seemingly reclaimed its invaded space, and that kind of story is what she calls a great inspiration. Inspiration is a creative process that is both magical and magic. Ideas inspire inspiration, and ideas are like a magical form floating through the air. Ideas always look for a body to inhabit, and your body might be perfect for that great idea if you're relaxed enough to receive it. When ideas float toward you, your subconscious mind can either say yes or no. Saying no to an idea is not always a bad thing because not all ideas are good for you. The moment you say yes, however, you've entered a contract with the inspiration. You can accept ideas by letting inspiration flow through you. Accept it as a partner and remove it from your mind that you're either its slave or master. Having established the main and subordinate ideas of the Amazon story, Gilbert began work in earnest. Not long after, some personal issues came up and she had to put away the manuscript, which she had titled Evelyn of the Amazon. Two years after putting away the Amazon story, Elizabeth returned to the story but discovered that she had lost the inspiration and the magic around it. When you fail to give room for an idea to manifest, it leaves your body and looks for another host. Anne Patcher and Elizabeth Gilbert had both established a friendship as two well-known writers. They had met and had instantly grown to be good friends, exchanging pleasantries and information through letters. When Anne mentioned to Elizabeth that she was writing a novel on the Amazon jungle in Brazil, the two met to discuss. During the discussion, Elizabeth realized that their stories were very similar and that Anne had gained her inspiration at about the same time she lost hers. 
This shows the magical power of ideas and the big magic attached to it. Chapter 4. You do not need anybody's permission to live a creative life. Sometimes you need to take charge of the whole situation yourself and do it your own way. You must find a way to draw your strength from members of your family who do not conform to the dictating powers of society. Whatever you want to do, be it singing, dancing, or writing books, go ahead and do it. Do it with a cheerful heart and take it seriously enough that you feel a sense of belonging from it. You are a natural creative and you do not need a permission slip from anyone to explore the creativity hidden in you. Eileen, a middle-aged woman who is also Elizabeth's neighbor, is a tattoo enthusiast that loves getting tattoos for the fun of it. When Elizabeth questioned her on why she had tattoos, she replied that her body and her time on Earth were temporary and she wanted to decorate herself as much as possible. Eileen's tattoos might not sit well with you, but the idea behind it should. Life is a temporary journey, and that's why you must also decorate yourself. Decorate yourself by writing or by doing whatever it is that you love doing. Celebrate your wins no matter how little they might be. This helps you cultivate a habit of appreciating your efforts in order to create happiness for yourself. Establishing a creative entitlement is very important because it's an inherent right of yours. Establishing a creative entitlement means that you have the right to have your vision and dreams. Be sure and convinced about what you do because you have the right to do it. Chapter 5. There's barely anything new, which means your idea is definitely not one of its kind. You might be bothered that a lot of people have written your idea, but the truth is that it has not been written by you. Your story will feel very original to people if you are able to put in all your efforts. While you must put in a lot of effort, don't wear yourself down by trying to do too much. Don't be too particular about helping or saving the world with your words. Allow your emotions to lead you, but don't let them get the best of you. You might feel the burning desire to seek validation of your creativity in a school, but the truth of the matter is that you do not need a school to become creative. This is not to say that it's bad to go to school and study more about arts and creativity. The whole idea is that if you can easily afford it, go for it. But if you can't, you can substitute schooling for hard work and constant practice. Instead of taking loans that will end up being too difficult for you to pay back, go into the world and explore instead. Stop complaining about the things that are not working well for you. The best way to overcome any challenge is to keep making conscious efforts. You shouldn't expect the world to feed you your dreams on a platter of gold. The world owes you nothing, and the earlier you realize that, the better. Complaints are boring, mundane, and stale. Complaints also chase away inspiration. All you need to do is keep doing your thing, and it will work out well someday. Chapter 6. Learning is one of the biggest arts of writing. The more you learn, the more your ability to write increases. Writing is not easy, and if you feel you've been imitating writers instead of coming up with your own style, you're not doing badly. Most writers imitate before they evolve. The more you practice, the better you get at anything you do. Persistence is the platform on which you build your creativity. While it is advisable that you start early, it's never too late to pick up your pen and write. There's no age limit to writing because the big magic can approach anybody regardless of their age. You can start to explore your creativity whenever you decide to start. Persistence helps you to overcome the challenges associated with writing. You might experience writer's block a lot of times in your life, but you mustn't allow frustration to set in. Stay relaxed and calm and soon you'll discover that you'll be able to overcome those challenges with little or no stress. After the storm comes the calm. The challenges of getting successful with your writing would put you on the brink of quitting, but what truly makes you a writer is your ability to overcome frustration and use it to your advantage. Chapter 7. It doesn't matter whether you're getting published or not, keep on writing your ideas. Instead of worrying about what you cannot control, shift your energy to what you can create. Roy T. Bennett Writing can hardly be your main job, and that's why you must make sure you have a day job that you do. Do not rely on writing to feed you. Persistence comes from your love for writing, and not necessarily from monetary gains and fame. People who write do so because they love to. Try as much as possible to make yourself attractive to your writing. 
Treat your writing like an affair and make sure you're both in the same condition for each other. There's nothing heroic about someone who decides not to try just because they're scared of failing. Aiming for perfection is as good as shooting yourself in the leg. What you need are discipline and hard work. Don't establish your creativity to please people. Nobody is thinking about you. The success you get from your work might not come in monetary form, but in the fact that you got the job done itself. Chapter 8. If you want to be a writer, it's not enough to know that you love writing. You must also know if writing loves you in return. When Robin Wall Kimmerer, a botanist and author at the SUNY College of Environmental Science and Forestry in Syracuse, New York, asked his students a question, he was able to draw out a big point. As enthusiasts, when asked if they love the earth, all the students raised their hands. But when they were asked if they think the earth loves them in return, they all dropped their hands. Many people believe that the earth doesn't care about them in any way, but this is not true. Mother Nature cares for humans as much as humans care for it. Accepting the fact that Mother Nature cares for you too is the best way to become a co-creator. To a young writer, writing is like having a bad girlfriend who uses you to satisfy her own purposes only. She doesn't give you the love you deserve, but you always find it difficult to let go of her. Most creatives are addicted to the pain that comes with their works. A lot of people wrongly believe in the notion that unless they are sad and unhappy, they can't reach the apex of their creativity. This has affected a lot of writers to a point where, if they're not in anguish, they don't believe in their ability to write anything valuable. Pain does not automatically translate to value, and it's possible to be very productive when you're happy or elated. Chapter 9 there's a chance you'll be more creative and productive if you embrace love instead of subscribing to sadness as an inspiration. You love writing, and writing should definitely love you in return. Trust your ability to write, and let the idea trust your ability to bring it into light. The idea chose you for a reason, and because it wants to be made known through you, you must trust it not to harm you. One thing you must always keep in mind is that you will fail at a point. Failure will disappoint you, but failure will also teach you valuable lessons. Don't be too bothered about failure, because it's all part of the process. Life is a paradox that mixes the good and the bad. The beauty of the Balinese dances in the temples was regarded as highly sacred and holy and thus attracted tourists. These tourists would crowd themselves in the temples and watch the Balinese religious dancers away their body in choreographed gyration. Over time, the temples got too crowded, and the dance became chaotic. The temple priests then decided to take the dance to the tourists, instead of crowding them in the temples. This did not sit well with some people, who felt the dance would lose its sanctity, so they challenged the priests. The priests then came up with another idea to create new dances for the tourists, and leave the sacred dances to the temple. This seemed like a good idea, until the new dances started displacing the old dances, and the priests had to change again. This time, they brought in the new dances and added them to the old dances, killing the holiness and sacredness of the dances. Creativity is sacred and also not sacred. It's a blend of the two. You must understand the importance of blending the paradoxes of life in order to achieve anything and everything. Conclusion Life is a fusion of good and bad, beautiful and ugly, sacred and ordinary. Being creative requires many things, most of which are hidden inside you like treasures. In order to find these treasures, you must understand the way life works, and you must unlearn a lot of things about creativity. There's a big magic that pairs you with ideas that want to be made manifest through you. Open your mind and allow the ideas to flow through you so that you can explore your creativity to the apex. Disregard the notion that you're only able to produce something valuable when you're emotionally uncomfortable. Productivity is not limited to anguish, and irrespective of where you draw your inspiration from, suffering shouldn't be your biggest escape. Try this. Take your time to think about the ideas that came to you that you disregarded because you lacked creativity. Reevaluate these ideas and reach out to your inner creativity to bring them back to life through the guidelines you've learnt from this tidbit.